Hi, and welcome to another installment of Math Basics with Mr. Besh. Today we're going to look at statistics, particularly Anchor E, 7th um, and 8th grade pre-algebra curriculum. There are eight vocabulary words we're going to concentrate on. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to give you a data set, and using that data set, we are going to identify these eight values. The mean, the median, and the mode, also known as our measures of central tendency, and then our range, our min, our max, our first quartile, and our third quartile. So here's how we begin. First, you need a data set. When you have a data set, there's always two things that you need to do with every single data set. First, count how many pieces of data you have in this data set. When I count them up, I get nine pieces of data. Why this is important is because my second step, what I have to do is take that data, and I got to put it in order from smallest to largest. So now, when I put it in order from smallest to largest, I want to count the data again. I want to make sure that I had the same number that I started with. This is a big mistake with 7th and 8th grade math. Students either miss a number or add one too many numbers, and as a result, all your data tends to be wrong. And that's something you don't want to have happen, especially if you're doing your math correctly. And this is a mistake that is very easy to correct. Now, once I have my data set of the eight things that we're looking for, four of them are real easy to find right off the bat. The min, the max, the range, and the mode. You see, the min is the smallest number in the data set, three. The max is the largest number in the data set, nine. The range is the difference between the max and the min. Subtract the two. Nine minus three would make six, so six is my range. And last but not least, my mode. By definition, the mode is the number that appears most often in your data set. In this data set, the number that appears most often is 7. So that's my mode. Now, a lot of students will point out and they'll say, well, Mr. Besh, there are two 8s in the data set as well. But see, 7s appear more than the 8s. You know, there's only two 8s and there's three 7s, and that's why it's a mode. Two other things I want you to notice about the mode. If you have a set of data where no number appears more often than the rest, then there can be no mode. Now, you don't write zero, because that could be a number. You simply write, there is no mode. And the other thing I wanted to point out is sometimes you can have more than one mode. In this data set right up here, what if there was another eight? Well, if there was another eight, then you'd have three sevens and three eights. So the modes of this set of data would be seven and eight. Pretty basic to figure out. The next thing I want to look at is the mean. By definition, the mean is the average, okay? And what the average, how you find the average is you take your, your numbers in your data set, all nine of them, and you add them all up. And when you add them all up, you get 59 in this set of data. Then you divide by how many numbers you added up, which is nine. And 59 divided by nine is 6.5 repeated. Notice the bar, all right? The bar symbolizes the fact that the fives continue to go forever. And now my average in mathematics is referred to as my mean. Mean and average mean exactly the same thing. The next term I want to find is the median. When I stack my data up in order from smallest to largest, I want to find the middle of my data set. Sometimes the number in the middle is actually the median, and sometimes it's not. And that's why I'm going to give you two different sets of data, uh, an odd number and even number, just to show you the difference. But in this set of data here, there are nine values. What I need to do is find the middle. And in the middle is the seven. Notice there's a seven to the right and a seven to the left. The median is a place value. It's telling you here is where the data gets separated into two halves, an upper half and a lower half. You see, to the left of the median, there are four numbers, 3, 4, 6, and 7. And to the right of the median, there is also four more numbers, 7, 8, 8, and 9. And why this is important is you have to differentiate these two halves that are created by the median. Okay, because now we use the lower half of data, we use this lower half of data to find the median of this. Take three, four, six, and seven and find the median. What's in the middle? The two terms that are in the middle are four and six. When there are two terms in the middle and not just one, what we have to do is take the average. We have to find the mean of four and six. So we take four plus six, Add them up makes 10, divided by 2 comes out to be 5. And that value becomes one of our other vocabulary terms. 
It is the first quartile. In some text or some other reference, it's also referred to as the lower quartile. But what this basically is, is the median of the lower half of data in my data set. It is the median of the set of data to the left of my true median of my set of data. I do the same exact thing to the data set above the median, 7, 8, 8, and 9. Taking a look at this, again, I want to find the median of those four values, the term in the middle. And there is no specific term in the middle. There are two 8s. So what I need to do is take the average of them. 8 plus 8 makes 16. 16 divided by 2 makes 8. And this becomes what's referred to as my third quartile. This can also be known as my upper quartile in certain texts or certain references. And this here is my last vocabulary term. This is my eighth term. So now I got my first quartile, my median, and my third quartile. The third quartile, remember, by definition, is the median of the set of data that is to the right of your median of your entire set of data. Okay? The key is to find the median first to separate your data into two halves, a half to the right of it, a half to the left of it. And then what you do is you take those two smaller data sets and find the median of each. And the one to the left of it becomes your first quartile or lower quartile. And the median to the right of it, that right set of data, becomes your third quartile or your upper quartile. Now, this is taking the data set that had an odd number, nine. What I'd like to do now is show you what happens, just the small, small differences that happens when you get a data set that has 10 numbers. Here are my values. I added them all up, I got 10. I want to double check this. The first thing I do in my data set is put your numbers in order from smallest to largest. And I've done this already. Okay, so now the same steps apply. And the only thing that's different from what we do from an odd set of data to an even set of data happens when we start to find the median. So the first four are still just as easy as they were before. The min is a 2, the max is a 9, the range is 9 minus 2, which is 7. And the mode, the number that appears most often, this time is 2. Now, when we find the average, we add up all our data in our data set. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 all add up to be 51. And then we have 10 numbers in our data set. 51 divided by 10 comes out to be 5.1. And this is my mean of my data set. Now, my median, here are where things change. In order from smallest to largest, I take my term in the middle. But when you have an even number in your data set, there is no one number in the middle. So I've got to take the 2 in the middle and take their average to find their mean. Take the 5 and the 6, add them together, which makes 11. And then 11 divided by 2 makes 5.5. So 5.5 is my median. Now, yes, some of you will say, well, Mr. Besh, 5.5 is not in my data set. Correct. It's not. The median does not have to be a value in your data set. Remember, the median divides your data into two halves, a lower half and an upper half. The median is like a place value. So now, to the left of the median, I have 2, 2, 2, 4, and 5. And then to the right of the median, I have 6, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay? So now, to determine the first quartile, I take the data to the left of the median, the lower set of data, and find the median of that. Now notice the change again. I don't have to take the average because there's a number in the middle. It's a 2. It's the third 2. So that 2 right there becomes your first quartile. Remember, this is also a place value, just like the median. It has to be a specific 2. It can't be the first 2. It can't be the second 2. It is actually the third 2. And you'll see where this comes into play with applications with a box and whisker graph. We will be doing later on sometime in, in the future, maybe next week. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the five pieces of data above it. Same way. Pick the term in the middle, which is seven. Seven becomes my third quartile or upper quartile. And this is the difference what happens between an odd set of data and an even set of data every single time. Remember, when you have an odd set of data, your median is in your data set, but your first and third quartiles have to be the average of two. When you have an even set of data, your median is not in your data set, and then when you find your first and third quartile, they will be in your data set. And this is basically it with basic statistics. 
I hope you find this uh, lesson both helpful and informative.